Welcome, Sam Scott. Russell winds it, feeds it back across, Chuck in, scores! Brady Kachuk makes it 2 0. Welcome to Sentence Talk. My name is Brandon Plant and I'm your host. Today the trade deadline officially kicked off for your Ottawa Senators as new general manager Steve Steos made his first ever trade as a general manager in the National Hockey League. But before we get into all of that and break it all down for you, I want to say thank you to all of you for nominating us for five different categories at this year's Ottawa Awards. We're up for five different nominations and it's such an honor. Thank you so, so very much. Uh, it's just a pleasure to be able to make these videos for you and to see how many of you guys love it and love it enough to nominate us is such an honor. So thank you all so very much. Last year we won best YouTube channel in Ottawa. So you know what? Just like last year, it's an honor to be nominated, but once you're nominated, you might as well win this thing. So if you want to vote for us to help us defend our title and potentially claim four new titles, you can vote for us by clicking the link in the description and comment section down below. We really, really appreciate it. Now, besides that, let's get into the video. So Ottawa today made a trade with the Florida Panthers. Now, last night, the Vegas Golden Knights and Washington Capitals made a trade. Uh, Anthony Mantha went to the Vegas Golden Knights. Now, you're probably wondering, Brandon, why the hell are you talking about Anthony Mantha? I thought this was a Vladimir Tarasenko trade reaction video. It is. It is. But let's just say last night, after that Mantha trade, I was feeling a little cheeky, a little excited. Uh, at the possible return that Ottawa could get for Vladimir Tarasenko. Let's just say many people have told me again how Ottawa did not get a first round pick. My goodness, old takes exposed for sure. Um, actually, old takes exposed retweeted it. It went viral. I can't believe how uh, viral this tweet went. Um, <laughs> and you can see on your screen my reaction. Guys, my mentions, my phone was literally burning. It was unbelievable how viral this tweet went. And for good measure, for good reason. Uh, the return obviously is shocking and uh, deservingly so. I got clowned on a little bit. Understandably, uh, yesterday after seeing that return from Antha, I thought Ottawa would get a first round pick. But obviously as we've seen things uh, come into fruition today, Ottawa really had no chance of getting that because frankly, there's no team other than Florida going to be acquiring Vladimir Tarasenko. We'll talk about that later in the video. You're probably a little confused about that if you don't know too much about this trade. So speaking of this trade, let's get into it. Enough rambling about Twitter and tweets and whatnot. Uh, so let's get into it. Ottawa today traded the right winger, Vladimir Tarasenko, the Tarasenko show uh, to the Florida Panthers for a 2024 third round selection and a conditional 2024 fourth round selection. That fourth could turn into a third in 2026 if the Florida Panthers win the Stanley Cup. As well, on top of that, the Ottawa Senators do retain 50% of Vladimir Tarasenko's salary, which is $2.5 million. So, um, far off from a first round pick, that's for sure. Um, I was at work today. Uh, I work at, or I'm interning right now at a content creation company. I have a couple of Sens fans around me, and uh, let's just say we all were shocked. We were shocked of uh, the return that Ottawa got on this one initially. But, you know, I've had a few hours to digest it, um, and we'll talk about it later in the video. But it is a terrible trade. It is a terrible return. But I don't really know what else you wanted Ottawa to do, considering the situation that Dorian put the Sens in. Um, so let me just say this. Yeah, it's a terrible trade. I'm not going to try to justify it. It's a terrible trade. There's no ifs or buts about it. Mantha's getting a second. And you look at these other trades. I mean, Henrique gets a first. Um, and Carrick as well in that package. I mean, there's first flying around like candy. And the Ottawa Senators cannot even get a second round pick for Vladimir Tarasenko. It is shocking to say the least. When you look around the league and the other moves that are going down currently. But once again, you know what? Considering the Ottawa Senators had their hands tied due to Vladimir Tarasenko's no trade clause. Now we all knew that Vladimir Tarasenko had a no trade clause. Um, and we're going to talk about whether that was a good decision or not from Dorian's uh, point of view to give him a no-trade clause on a one-year deal. Um, but anyways, we'll talk about that in a second. The point of the matter is he had a no-trade clause. His family was in Florida. He only wanted to go to Florida. Steve Stavos did not really have much of a choice but to trade Tarasenko to Florida or not get a return. Because you know what? I've seen people say, oh, well, you know what? Steve Stavos should have waited it out till Friday. And then traded, uh, you know, Vladimir Tarasenko to Florida for a bit of a better return. Yeah, theoretically that could happen. No doubt about it. That definitely could have happened. 
You know what else could have happened? Ottawa could have got screwed. Florida could have found another winger uh, on the market and Ottawa would have had no one to trade Vladimir Tarasenko to. And suddenly the measly return, which is really measly, he's being very polite about it. It's a terrible return. It's terrible. Third and a fourth. It's terrible considering the other trades. But I'd rather have the picks than no picks at all. And that's what would have happened if Ottawa um, potentially would have waited till Friday. They might have not even been able to make a move to begin with. Because once again, Tarasenko is not going to go anywhere but Florida. His family's in Florida right now. And I have no doubt that considering the amount of guys that are on the market right now, um, I have no doubt that Florida probably would have made another move. So for the Sens, for Steve Steos, they didn't have much of a choice. Gary Ox said today that Ottawa was willing to give Tarasenko a contract extension. He wasn't really interested in that. Once again, his family is in Florida. Um, so for Steve Steos, it's his first NHL trade. Um, a lot of people are saying the rookie GM got fleeced. He did get fleeced. There's no doubt about that. It has nothing to do with him being a rookie, though. His hands were tied. The player wanted to go to one spot, and the Ottawa Senators had no choice but to give him up because otherwise the alternative is losing him for nothing. So um, I'm not going to defend the trade in terms of the result. Uh, I think the return could have been better. I think Steos probably could have pushed a little bit more. I mean, come on, look at the market. This is still a very good forward, which we're going to talk about in a second. But at the end of the day, if that was the best possible return Florida was willing to give, um, that's just what it's going to be. Once again, Ottawa had no leverage in the situation. So um, I was a bit foolish for thinking Ottawa would get a first. Definitely shocked they didn't get a second. But at least they got a couple of picks here. And, you know, once again, Ottawa, they signed him for nothing. They only had to spend money to get this guy. They didn't have to trade any assets or anything to get him. So, obviously, Ottawa should not even have to be a seller. They should have been buyers. Um, Tarasenko should have been here for the remainder of the year. And in the playoffs, obviously, things have gone differently, though. So, at least we got a couple of middle-round picks um, for basically nothing. That's the most positive way to look at it. But once again, the trade still completely sucks for Ottawa because Tarasenko is by far one of the better wingers on the market. The point, very simply, before I break down what Florida Panther fans are getting in Vladimir Tarasenko, um, I blame Pierre Dorian for all of this and this entire mess that Steve Steos has had to clean up. Steve Steos didn't sign Vladimir Tarasenko to a one-year deal with a full no-trade clause. That was Pierre Dorian, okay? Dorian did that. So for Steve Steos... I mean, at the end of the day, he already got the indication that Tarasenko probably wasn't going to sign there. They had to get something. They couldn't trade him to anybody except to a team that Tarasenko wanted to go to. So um, this is not Steos' fault. This is Dorian's fault because Dorian put Steos in an impossible, impossible situation. Now for Florida, they're getting an experienced veteran Stanley Cup winger who can contribute immediately in the top nine, probably in the top six, and on their power play. Tarasenko, the right winger, is 32 years old, 57 games this year, 17 goals, 24 assists for 41 total points, eight of those on the power play. So a lot of five-on-five -five points. He's a very good five-on-five -five player with a 14.7 shooting percentage and four game-winning goals. So for Ottawa, um, once again, they lose his trade for Florida. They absolutely fleece us. They get an incredible, incredible winger who has a cup pedigree, who's respected around the entire National Hockey League and will bring much-needed experience to a Florida Panther team looking to go back to the Stanley Cup Finals. So uh, for Vladimir Tarasenko, I wish you the best of luck. I am so, so happy that a legend like this, a potential probable Hall of Famer, got to play on your Ottawa Senators, on our Ottawa Senators. I think that's so awesome. Uh, obviously it sucks the way it ended and how short it was, but the fact it happened was pretty cool. So I wish nothing but the best of Vladimir Tarasenko. And hopefully, you know what? Hopefully he gets the cup and Ottawa gets that fourth turn into a third. So yeah, good luck to Vladimir Tarasenko and congratulations to Florida Panther fans and the organization. Uh, you guys got a hell of a player, that's for sure. Now, the last thing I want to mention here are a couple of things. Firstly, Ottawa has a few players left on the market in the NHL and the AHL. So in the NHL, we've heard that Tampa Bay and Philadelphia have inquired on Jacob Chikrin. I do not believe they're going to trade him. From what I'm hearing, from what insiders are hearing, and what Common Sense frankly says, um, Chikrin probably, if he's going to be dealt, will be dealt in the offseason. It doesn't make sense to make a move like this right now unless the trade is a home run. So if, you know, Tampa Bay or Philadelphia get desperate, We'll see, but Philadelphia has already made a trade today for a defenseman. So, I mean, I don't know if that takes them out of the running. Once again, frankly, I don't think Chikrin's value will drop in the offseason. It still should be pretty high. Um, so I think this is a move they do in the offseason. But once again, if there's smoke, there's fire, and um, definitely it's something to keep an eye on. I just don't expect it to happen. Insiders are kind of pouring cold water on it at the same time. Elliot Freeman the other day on Spit and Chicklets essentially said that Ottawa is likely going to look in the offseason 
to look at one of these longer term contract type of guys in a potential move. Chikrin obviously would be a part of that. Freeman even said that. So um, this is not just me, you know, telling you what I've heard. This is what the insiders are literally saying. So Chikrin might move, probably won't. Eric Brandstrom, I'd expect him to move though. Um, he probably should get at least a third round pick, maybe a second. Um, you know, this is a guy that teams, as I already mentioned, could definitely want. He's a good depth guy. He can provide some good offense, can also play on the penalty kill. Very well-rounded defenseman. Mark Kasich's another guy that potentially might be moved. Gary Ock put his name in an article the other day as a guy that might be moved. Um, Rourke Chardier was just called up, so they have that fourth-line center to replace Kasich if necessary. Uh, team definitely can bite on a guy like Kasich. Cheap contract, wins a lot of face-offs. Uh, frankly, I wouldn't trade Kasich. I think I'd like to keep him here for the remainder of the year, see how he does in a more open forward core. Maybe he takes advantage of that. And then, you know what? You can trade him in the offseason if you want because uh, I think his value is not going to get any lower. Now, Dominic Kubelik, he actually kind of is involved in this Vladimir Tarasenko trade for a very interesting reason. Steo said that, you know, in terms of a third-party broker being involved in this trade, he said it would be unlikely, citing the fact that the Ottawa Senators already have two out of three retention slots used. Now, um, you know, that is key to me in terms of Kubelik because clearly that means the Ottawa Senators are looking to potentially retain salary on Kubelik to make it easier to move him. So clearly the Ottawa Senators are doing everything they can to move him, and that's why um, that was a little interesting to me. Kubelik, I think, still will be dealt. Um, probably a Friday move, though. Now, in the AHL, Igor Sokolov, Lassie Thompson, Cole Reinhardt, these are guys that might be thrown into a trade to up the value. Um, all three have kind of been disappointing. Reinhardt's a guy that has some NHL value on a fourth line. Sokolov has NHL potential, but the skating's just not there. And Lassie Thompson just needs a change of scenery. So those are a few AHL guys to keep an eye on. So, yeah, besides that, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. As always, let me know what you think about this trade. Good trade, bad trade. How are you feeling? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'll see you all soon. Go Sins Go.